Hello, I'm Katie Jarvis. This week, Real Foot Forward is made possible by our friends at Final Flight Outfitters, the family-owned outdoor store that has all the apparel and outdoor equipment you need for your next hunting or fishing trip. Visit finalflight.net for more information. I'm Scott Williams, your host. We're really excited to bring to you today a very special episode from the Tennessee Farm Bureau Annual Meeting in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, I'm here with Lee Maddox. Lee is the director of the Communications Division of Farm Bureau. Welcome, Lee. Pleasure to be here. Glad y'all are here. Thank you. We're having a ball. Tell me a little bit about Farm Bureau. What What is the purpose of Farm Bureau? Well, it started almost 100 years ago. This is our 98th annual meeting, you know. We're, we're fixing to hit the century mark. 1921, wow. a group of farmers got together across the state. They met and knew that they needed to have a better voice, a representation for what they're doing, you know, working the ground and providing our food and, and fiber. And so they, they formed the, the Farm Bureau, 1921, and it's a group of farmers, and that first president that was elected was from Murray County, uh, just outside of Columbia in Williamsport, Tennessee. So he was the first president. Their state office was, was immediately uh, moved to the basement of the courthouse in, in uh, Columbia, and that's what began the Farm Bureau in 1921. And that mission statement that they put forward is to promote and protect agriculture and rural life in Tennessee, that's still our mission statement today, nearly 100 years later. So, so between then and now, there's just, it's a whole different world, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, there was there weren't any tractors, yeah. you know, in 1921. <laughs> that's you crazy. Know? I mean, and now they're driving themselves. Oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> they, they literally are. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's an amazing uh, industry that, you know, we think it's the most important industry. Mm -hmm. Agriculture is our most important industry. It, it's right up there. You know, I, I, I liken it to our national security, like our military, mm -hmm. because if we don't, if we can't feed ourselves, if we can't provide food and fiber for our country, you know, we're going to depend on another country to do that. And mm -hmm. I don't think anybody wants to do that. I think no. we want to, uh, you know, our farmers should be lifted up to a higher uh, you know, expectation, which they are. They do, they're the world's greatest at what they do, at producing food and fiber, most efficiently, most affordable. You know, we've got the most affordable food supply in the world, and uh, it, that's thanks to our farmers. You know, we've got the Farm Bureau, you know, we're blessed in Tennessee. We've got the largest Farm Bureau in the nation. Oh, I didn't know that. We've got 677,000 Tennesseans. Wow that are members of the Tennessee Farm Bureau. By 100,000, we're over the next state, which would be uh, Kentucky and North Carolina, kind of go back and forth as to number two, and Georgia, well, not Georgia, but uh, North Carolina and Kentucky. But mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, we've, got, we've got a great Farm Bureau, and a lot of people think about Farm Bureau, they think first and foremost to, in today about insurance. All right, right, we, we do have a fantastic insurance company. And that's why, you know, there's a lot of people that belong to Farm Bureau. You have to be a member to get that insurance. So we started our own insurance company, a health insurance company in 1947, uh, because farmers were having a tough time getting health insurance. So we started our own company, uh, the Tennessee Rural Health Improvement Association, which today is known as Farm Bureau Health Plans. A year later, we started the PNC company, the property and casualty, where you get your car insurance, where you get your... You know your home insurance, your your property insurance. We started that in '48, and so we've just grown from there. We've got a great uh, organization. We still represent farmers in Nashville, in Washington, when issues come up that we're trying to push for and or stop issues that would come. You know that might hurt. You know, agri the ag industry. Something you hear you hear a lot is that you know by 2050, we'll have 10 billion people. We can't feed that many feed, clothe, and fuel that many people. What do you think the biggest challenges are for folks working in agriculture today? Well, there are several challenges. Obviously, as I said earlier, we're, 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 our farmers are the most efficient there are. You know, they, they have risen to the occasion to uh, produce like no other, other country, no other farmer in the world. And so we depend on trade uh, to, to export 
you know, the products that we produce, you know, that's the issue we're having, you know, strongly today. We're hurting from the, you know, the trade wars, mm-hmm. the, the tariffs. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, they're, they're, they're keeping hope that uh, every day we're going to continue to work out new trade deals with other countries. And hopefully China is going to come back on because that was one of our biggest partners. They are buying a whole lot more. But obviously, uh, the, the other thing is education. You know, it's continuing to try to educate the general public about what our farmers do. Yeah, uh, there's a real there's a real uh, separation between regular folks and and people in the agriculture community. Yeah. Even with simple things like GMO that yeah. we see in the grocery store over and over and over again, probably ninety five percent of the people don't even know what that means. That's exactly right, and we're th- that's one of the j- roles that we have. Uh, at Farm Bureau, uh, in our communications division, we're we're trying to educate folks through, uh, you know, through our magazine. We have the Tennessee Home and Farm magazine that goes to all six hundred and seventy-seven thousand members. We have a, a Farm Bureau newspaper. We do uh, a daily radio program. We have a, a, a basically a monthly TV program on RFD TV uh, that airs on Saturdays. There's a different Farm Bureau that airs every Saturday on RFD TV. So, you know, we're reaching out to as most as much as we can to try to educate the general public why agriculture is so important. We're fortunate in Tennessee that we've got a you know, this new governor that we've got Bill Lee. Mm-hmm. He's a farmer himself. Right. And uh, he understands it. He gets it. And we've been blessed. And he's passionate about rural America oh, he's and very things passionate. we can do to help yeah, help and, help folks that live in rural counties and, and cities around. And we've got to do that more. I mean, that that is our mission at the Farm Bureau. So you, you mentioned connect. the radio. You mentioned radio. Yeah. You've clearly got a, a good radio voice. Yeah. So what's, what's your background? Well, um, I grew up in Lincoln County, Tennessee. I have to tell everybody I grew up <laughs> in Lincoln County, Fayetteville, Tennessee. I think that's the center of the universe, yep. without a doubt. I think there's a big horse show that goes on there. Yeah, well, we've got harness racing at the mm-hmm. county fair. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the only place you can go in Tennessee and see harness racing. It's mm-hmm. kind of cool mm-hmm. uh, every year in September. I've been there. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's a neat place. But yeah, I grew up a small farm. We had uh, tobacco and beef cattle and and uh, and then sheep uh, as well. And uh, you know, I started working in radio at the, on our little small farm uh, about 200 yards away uh, was the FM radio station there mm-hmm. in town in, mm-hmm. in Fayetteville. And uh, so they got this idea. The the owner up there says, "Why don't we train this kid down here to, you know, ha- teach him how to turn on the transmitter, and you know, in case we, you know, somebody can't get up the hill and get up there to get things turned on." And so that's what kind of led me. I started working when I was 14 at the radio station, and and uh, you know, uh, uh, my folks were involved heavily with the Lincoln County Farm Bureau, mm-hmm. you know, on board of directors and. After I got my degree in communications, uh, From, finished it. well, I started at UT, okay. uh, and then I went on one of those long plans. I took some uh, time off after a year and a half at UT, uh, and then uh, came back and finished up at MTSU in their okay. communications program, yeah. uh, and and was working at a TV station in Huntsville, Alabama, and working back at that radio station after I graduated, and and uh, fortunately, I got this call. Uh, some 26 years ago from the Farm Bureau to, about this opportunity, and I've been here for almost 26 years now. That's amazing. So so uh, you got back into agriculture and, yes. and through the communications. Yes. What do you think we can do to help uh, college students and high school students today consider fields in agriculture? Because that is the most important thing is that we get the best, brightest minds you know, into the field. Well, and we talked about it. Uh, that governor, his his commitment to to bring back more, you know, career and technical education, an emphasis on that in our schools, in the high schools. So we're seeing much more of that, and 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 that to me is going to help going forward to, you know, show that there are some great careers in agriculture. Uh, you know, there's some, there's some careers in communication. Lord, we we need more great communicators to to help us in communicating this story of agriculture. That's there, right. There is no doubt we need more help that mm-hmm. way because mm-hmm. there's you know it's obvious there's less than two percent 
of our population work on the farm right. and production agriculture. And, and we're two, three, four generations oh, back from yeah. people. Most people, they think of food, they think of the grocery store. No doubt. They do not know yeah. where it comes from. And, you know, I until recently, I was among them. Yeah. No, clueless. That That's one of our, our big issues that we have. One of the things we have is called Ag in the Classroom. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that for almost 30 years now. You've got a really cool simulator that yes. we've had at, at Discovery Park. Yes, yes. We we, we, we take that around the state. Yeah. We need more of those, you know. Yeah. Uh, those are fun. The governor's been on inside that. Oh, that's yeah. great. So we, we need more things like that. Uh, our Ag in the Classroom program is working to uh, equip our teachers through, uh, through, throughout Tennessee to give them curriculum that they can use to share with the kids, uh, you know, about the industry of agriculture. They're subtly bringing that, you know, into their classrooms. We train, have teacher workshops during the summer that, you know, we have hundreds and hundreds of teachers that, that participate in on a, a yearly basis all across the state getting that curriculum. They're in turn sharing that in their classrooms and incorporating science and, you know, the STEM, you sure. know, the, the English and the mathematics. Yep. They're, they're incorporating um, that, those lesson plans to the students yeah. to relate back to agriculture mm -hmm. and the, the ag industry. You know, it's, it, it's our number one industry in Tennessee, right. with, without a right. doubt. Nobody, we say it over and over, but I don't think it resonates with people, mm -mm. you know. But no, it is, without know. a doubt, you know, it's like 13% of our economy. It's the largest sector of Tennessee's economy. Yeah, that's insane, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, people do not realize that. Yeah. So so what happens here today? We're going to be talking to a lot of the folks that are here. What, what are people here for today? Well, this is, uh, as our president, Mr. Aiken, would say, you know, this is kind of a celebration uh, of the year's activities in Farm Bureau. Uh, they, they come together, and um, we have all kinds of things. It actually started yesterday on Saturday here with uh, the young farmer many of the young farmer and rancher events and that they're continuing today. They have a huge discussion meet contest uh, that's open to, to young people between 18 and 35. That's what our young farmer program represents and, and incorporates. So they, they have a discussion meet contest. We have a huge trade show here today. Uh, tonight, we're going to recognize all kinds of folks, uh, the counties, you know, that have excelled in different categories. We're going to honor our distinguished leaders. Uh, just, we hand out five distinguished service awards. Those will go out tonight. And then uh, tomorrow we hear from some, you know, some top speakers in the industry, uh, the Farm Bureau Health Plans annual meeting. And then one of the biggest things and one of the biggest reasons that people, why we have this convention is our, our business session. That will start tomorrow afternoon. And that's voting delegates from all 95 counties that come together and decide and discuss and then adopt the policies that we're going to be for and or against mm. in the coming year. Wow. We use that, that, those policy resolutions that we put together each year to help us lobby on behalf of our farmers. And that'll be big news, I'm sure, and then you end up dealing with the press who will be here to cover, right. well, and the, cover governor, the results. The governor is going to be here on Tuesday to give an address at that business session. So, uh, you know, it's one thing, when he was running for governor, and he, he's known about Farm Bureau, but when he was running for, for office, he saw the, the resolution book that we adopt. On a yearly basis, you know, mm -hmm. we make some changes, add some new language to it mm -hmm. uh, each year. That's why we have this annual meeting. And they decided, the county delegates, the mm -hmm. voting delegates okay. decided, not from the top. Sure. This comes from the county. Yeah. And that's what's so unique about our organization. But he saw that and read that document, that resolution book, and mm -hmm. he immediately kind of just changed his whole course. And wow. Says, this is this is these are the things I stand for. That's amazing. You know, I'm, I want to, you know, I want to know more about what Farm Bureau is doing yeah. and and how you're doing it. So we've had a great relationship with him, and we just appreciate him. He's going to be here just to to address our our voting delegates and at the business session. So we, we we're blessed. The Farm Bureau uh, is is just a unique organization that not a lot of people really know about and understand. They they know it for you know, a, a great insurance product, but they don't necessarily know it that it's first and foremost a farm organization 
and it's uh, represented by farmers in all of our elected positions. The board of directors are all full-time farmers. Our state president was a full-time farmer. Now he's the state president, Mr. Jeff Aiken, and he, he works tirelessly uh, traveling throughout the state and actually throughout the nation. Goes yeah. to Washington quite a bit. He's on the a board of directors of the American Farm Bureau uh, Farm Bureau, mm -hmm. and you know, Farm Bureau is in all 50 states in Puerto Rico. Mm. We're doing the same thing that we do in Tennessee in all 50 states. Do they? And they move it around. I'm assuming they go to different different states each each year. The the uh, the, the American do. the yeah. American Farm Bureau Convention. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it ever in Tennessee? Oh yeah, it's okay, been good. it's been in Opryland. Uh, oh great. Uh, Several times good. in my in my career, yeah, oh, good. For like three times I think in 26 years. It's and it's coming back I think in a couple of years. Okay, it'll good. Be, it'll be back. It's going to there could be in, in January. We go to Austin, Texas. Oh, that's a good yeah. place to get yeah. to. Yeah, so we'll we'll be there in yeah. January, and they do the same thing. They they vote on policies. Delegates from all 50 states come together and discuss the issues that uh, you know that we're for and against, and mm -hmm. they'll adopt that policy resolution book. Uh, just like we do here in Tennessee. Yeah, well, I know that you have a ton to do today, so yeah. I'm really glad I got you before it got before the parade got started. But we're so glad y'all are here, and we're so glad of what is being done at Discovery Park of America. Thank you. That is an incredible um, hidden treasure. Yeah. We need, that needs to be promoted. I know y'all are doing that. Yeah, that's what we're that, doing here. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is a treasure, and... I really would like to see 69 go through there because yep. it's going to open up the eyes of a whole lot more people. The hotels right. that are coming up there yep. are going to allow people like from here in Middle Tennessee, mm -hmm. the kids, uh, students, to go over there and spend the night. Yep. You know, you need two days in that day. You right? absolutely you need more do. than that. You, you need could a use week. three, maybe four. <laughs> yeah, you need. You for sure need more in a day. Yeah, well, with Real Foot Lake right next to us, yeah. that gives more more to do. And having the hotels, are, are, I think, are, yeah. are, is the next big step. Yep, three three hotels, yeah. three brand new hotels. So. That's going to make a difference. Yeah, and oh what yeah. A, what a great Union City is just a cool place. Yeah, yeah I like, it it's kind of like Fayetteville. Yeah, that's what I like. I it like is. about Union City. Yeah, it's, it's a great a, town. It's just small enough to not be too big, but yep. you know, it is pretty. It's got you know, it's, it's got the Discovery Park of America. Yeah, that's My right. Goodness. Well, let me know the next time you get up there. We'll show you the behind the scenes. That'd be great. That'd be great. Sounds good. Well, thank you. Thank y'all for being here. And now, let's go find out a little bit more behind the scenes at Discovery Park of America. Hello, I'm Andrew Gibson with the Education Department here at beautiful Discovery Park of America. And today, I'm with Zach Ray, Discovery Park's in-house historian. What are we learning about, Zach? We're going to talk about the differences between what constitutes a spear point and an arrowhead. All right. Uh, so my first question... Is it a difference in material? No, it's actually a difference in the size. Here at Discovery Park, we have we have a very large Native American gallery. And one of the first things you'll see here is a huge collection of spear points and arrowheads. The very first thing when you walk into the gallery you'll see are spear points. They typically are around two inches long. Um, they were attached to, unsurprisingly, spear points or spears. They were used to hunt megafauna, so large animals like the mammoth, um, giant land sloths, um, American lions, things of that sort. Um, you get later on in the period, towards um, the end of the woodland period and then close to the Mississippian period, where a lot of those large animals died out, and they started hunt hunting smaller game. This constituted a shift in not using spears anymore, and switching to bows. This is when bows started becoming more prevalent. And so you were shooting what typically people call um, bird points. Those are true arrowheads because they are shot from a bow. You kind of can't you can't have a arrow without a bow. So before what they would use is spear points or darts. And that's what you when you see the really long arrowheads, that's what those are. Those are spear points or dart heads. Those are the very small ones. Those are actual true arrowheads. Now, you said, d does it constitute a different material? Typically, most of the material that they're made out of are different types of chert. Around here, you have, um, I know one, for example, is, I believe it's called Dalton chert. Um, and that's primarily what you would find around here. 
Okay, and then so we have this this really neat contraption tool upstairs called an addle addle. Um, yeah. It's my understanding that was used for hunting as well. Can you talk about that some? Sure. That is um, a sp- dart thrower. I can't call it a spear because typically spears were wielded two handed, and you didn't typically want to throw those until you were f- fairly sure you're going to hit your target. Um, a dart point would have been thrown from a addle addle or a spear thrower. Um, there are actually tribes today that still use this. They're typically up north or even down in, into um, Mexico. Um, but the Addle Addle is a, basically, it is a spear-throwing device that lengthens your arm. And it can either be just a stick with a notch at the end where you can attach it to a dart, or it's more, like the one we have upstairs um, in our gallery is actually made out of deer antler. And it's a lot fancier. Um, actually, the one we have has a very unique, how should I say this, a unique device attached to it. It actually has a silencer to make sure that the animals do not hear you coming. What this would do is this would allow you to hit a target harder and from farther away. There's actually evidence of an Indians using this to hunt mammoth. There's been evidence found of mammoths having spearheads stuck in their spines. The way I describe this to most is you, I don't care if you are Mr. Universe, you're the strongest man in the world, you cannot throw a spear point hard enough to puncture the hide, muscle, fat, and then the bone of a mammoth. So this shows very good evidence of the fact that Paleo Indians would have used a spear throwing device to hunt mammoths. All right. Thank you, Zach. I know a lot of our listeners discovered something new today. Uh, one little thing before we before we finish up, you can find Zach and you can find all the information you, your heart uh, desires on spear points and arrowheads and the Addle Addle in our extensive exhibit uh, covering Native American artifacts here at Discovery Park of America. Thank you all for listening to Real Foot Forward, a West Nessie podcast, and we hope to see you here real soon. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes or wherever you may be listening. Plan your own adventure to see beyond at Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. Be sure to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.